And now it's time for the Impact Wrestling Report. Here's your host, Matthew Schaffer. What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to another edition of the Impact Wrestling Report. I'm your host, Matthew Schaffer. You can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Matthew underscore Schaffer. Of course, if you like this and want more wrestling news, reviews, and content, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. You'll be updated and notified when you become part of the One Wrestling Warriors. That's right. That's what I'm dubbing all of you beautiful souls out there watching this video today. Now, of course, uh, you can also check out This Is NXT with Michael Jargo. And I have, of course, advertised it a couple weeks, but it has been confirmed next week. This week in WWE with Rick Vickery will be debuting, as well as a multitude of other interviews and news, of course, from Bill Apter and wrestling itself. Also, I do want to advise you that you are hearing this first tomorrow, coming to you right here on One Wrestling YouTube. I will be doing a giveaway for a signed 8x10 of WWE Superstar Elias that I received in that wrestling club. I will be uploading a unboxing here, which will have the details and information on how you can win that by using the hashtag one wrestling giveaway hashtag. Um, but of course, you'll have to check that video out for more information. Now you're here, hopefully not just to see my beautiful face and my brand new hairdo, but for this week's Impact Wrestling Review. That's right, August 16th, 2018 starts off with a recap from last week's episode, Impact then comes right out hot. OVE making their way down to the ring as they're not going to delay, giving us Pentagon Jr.'s Lucha Brother Phoenix as he goes one-on-one -on -one with OVE's Sammy Callahan. This match starts out with Sammy coming out with Sa Sammy with a swarm of punches and kicks, taking control of Phoenix in the right turnbuckle corner. However, Phoenix was, of course, a man with... Lots of agility and lots of speed as he was able to take a momentum with a flurry of aerial attacks. We did try to get involved early. However, Phoenix was able to take out all three members with a suicide dive to the outside where all three were standing. Back in the ring, then we later on saw Phoenix land a swanton bomb, but Sammy kicked out after a pinfall attempt. Sammy was then able to take control of the match after OVE interfered. And he landed a vicious Sambo suplex with Phoenix landing on his head. It was quite the sight. OVE then interfered, of course, as they continued on. Uh, later on in the match, though, we did kind of see somewhat a disgusting moment. As Sammy Callahan and Phoenix are on the outside, Sammy Callahan is attacking Phoenix. He spits in his hand, and then he lets the spit hang or drool down, drain down, drip down is the, probably the terminology, and he captures it in his mouth and re-swallows it. It was quite disgusting, made my stomach grumble. Uh, they then continued back and forth with breaking down the match at one point. Sammy Callahan rained down on Phoenix with punches on the outside. We also saw Sammy Callahan attempt a powerbomb. However, Phoenix reversed it and landed a cutter with Sammy Callahan coming down on the entrance ramp face first. The conclusion of the match though saw OVE try to interfere finally or once more. However, Pentagon Jr. finally had enough as he came down to the ring. He took da out Dave and Chris, and then Phoenix was able to hit his finisher and pick up the 1-2-3. Your winner, Phoenix, over Sammy Callahan. Now, this crowd was definitely hot for this match itself. They were uh, fully behind Phoenix. Uh, we then went to a promo airing for tonight's Street Fight match between OGs and the LAX. Uh, we then come back after that promo, and we see Phoenix, who's backstage, and we just got announced that Phoenix will be going one-on-one -on -one with the new X Division champion, his first X Division title defense, Ryan Cage, in two weeks at Impact's television special, Redefined. And as he begins to cut his promo about how he's going to, you know, uh, declare victory over Cage, Cage walks by and uh, quietly stares him down. He holds up that Impact championship and then walks off. Uh, the second match of the night, I'm not really calling it the second match, it was a throwback, the GWN match of the week. It was a tag team match, um, I don't quite recall this in Impact right now off the top of my head. This might have been, a this seems to be part of the Hogan and Bischoff era, and there was some times at that point where I kind of did tune out a little bit, only because it just kind of got to be a little ridiculous at that point. And case in point was that this match tonight, the GWN match tonight, was a quadruple match a quadruple threat I can't say 
quadruple bout, a quadruple quad uh, that included uh, four teams. Uh, the Dudleys, the British Invasion, uh, the main event mafia representatives Booker T and Scott Steiner, and Beer Money. Uh, it seemed to break down. I wasn't really paying attention. There was a riot that ended up taking place with the police showing up. So I guess that's what was going down on uh, Impact, which, I mean, that does kind of go to the par with if Vince Russo was still on board with that more of a dramatic television style. I'm not going to say crash TV, but more dramatic television that kind of sucks you in. So maybe I should have been watching at this point. Uh, we then went to a vignette of uh, King and the OGs. Uh, they were walking down the streets. They're yelling, you know, where are you at, Conan? You know, prepare, you're going to get it in the streets. So it looks like this bout is legitimately going to be in the streets. I'm assuming it's going to be similar to like uh, the Broken Universe type of uh, vignette video packages. Even though it was broken that uh, one of the uh, video choreographers or video production managers itself uh, was just recently signed by NXT. I'm not talking about Jerry Borbash. If you want more information on that, you can watch Conspiracy Horseman with Ben Hameen. I'll give you all the full details. Uh, we then went to a backstage interview with Ali and Kiara Hogan. Ali says this is not about the championship tonight. There is no more distractions. Uh, she made a promise that nobody else is going to get stuffed inside the casket. And uh, tonight she's going to keep that promise itself. Kara Hogan, of course, says, you know, she's got her back. Allie says, I know, girl. And uh, that's the last we heard of Allie and Kara Hogan before tonight's main event. Because it really was a main event live match, which we'll get to later on. Uh, we then go back live and we see the next match that's scheduled up. is flash the vignette and video package between Jimmy Jacobs, Johnny Impact, and Congo Kong. Um, Jacob comes out to the ring. He cuts a promo, tells Impact to come out to the ring because he's the monster. I mean, there was a little bit more to that. That's essentially what he says. Um, before Impact, though, could get out to the ring, Congo Kong actually comes out from behind and attacks him. Uh, Congo Kong lays him out. He then throws Impact into the ring. The bell actually rings at this point. Jacobs then goes for a pin. Impact kicks out. Um, now, Jacobs tries to lay in a little bit of offense. A couple kicks, a couple, you know, punches. Impact really no sells. He also no sells a chair shot. Um, that was pretty much the match though, because then Conan Gokhan ended up interfering like about a minute or two later, and uh, Impact essentially got the win by disqualification. The post match is really where a lot of the stuff took uh, happened as Congo and Jacobs um, tried to brawl with Impact. Now Impact and Congo go back and forth on the inside and outside on the entrance ramp. Um, they uh, at one point Congo and Jacobs get the steel steps involved and attempt to lay. Impact out on it. Uh, Johnny Impact, though, reverses and takes out Congo Kong. Um, not on the steel steps, but on the entrance ramp, and he basically gets kicked off the entrance ramp, and that's the last we saw of Congo Kong. Uh, Impact and Jimmy Jacobs then go back and forth before eventually uh, Impact, um, you know, essentially takes him out, and uh, he hits him on the side of the head with the steel steps. And uh, that was the end of that match. So Jimmy Jacobs, your winner, and the uh, storyline between Impact, Congo Kong, and Jimmy Jacobs continues all right so then we get the debut of the smoke show and the smoke show is uh built up by a vignette between uh km and follow ba so it starts off with km and follow ba both preparing to go on to a date and then they end up at the same location like hey what are you doing here you know km's like what are you doing here and ba says ba what do you mean you're here for a date ba what do you mean you're here for the same person so they end up figuring out that they're both there to see scarlet bourdois um Fala Ba has a bucket of ice full of champagne. Uh, KM tries to steal it. They eventually uh, end up at uh, Scarlet Bordeaux's location. I don't know if it's in a house or room uh, or on the set of a warehouse. Um, they uh, end up uh, being end up getting asked by Scarlet itself. Scarlet says, "You know, you know, I, I hate to see you guys. Why are you guys fighting so much? Uh, you know, you guys are both strong individuals and a team, and you guys should be." you know, working together. And KM goes on to explain that he's been trying to teach Falaba. I tried to train him, tried to show him. You know, he's been trying to do it his ways. You know, Falaba is arguing with him about wanting to do it his way. Uh, Scarlet eventually goes on to say that he should try it her way. Um, this convinces KM. He says that she is like a version of a female Buddha. And uh, basically... Uh, he looks over to Ba and says that let's do it. You know, let's let's get matching outfits. You know, I'll get a pink tie. Um, you know, I'll do the whole get up. And if you if you saw the images did that were leaked out online, uh, they got matching get up, so it's pretty funny. 
Um, but the best part of this whole smoke show show that ended was Pa gets up and he's wearing a pink tie and he looks over to Scarlet in a sly way and he goes, Ba. And uh, Scarlet gets up, slaps him, and says, That's disgusting. She walks off. So, pretty funny to uh, wonder what Fala Ba might have been Ba and on about. Uh, we then go back live to the ring, and now we're going to get an explanation from the Impact World Heavyweight Champion, Austin Aries. Austin Aries is out in the ring with Killer Cross. Him and Killer Cross, uh, well, actually, he comes out first. Austin Aries talks about his sound victory over Ed Edwards. He says that uh, people are asking him so many questions about Killer Cross. Aries says, though, unlike a vast majority of people in the industry, so he's generalizing by saying a lot of wrestlers don't have the ability to speak for themselves or have the, I guess, natural ability or um, skill and talent to cut a promo. So he asks uh, Killer Cross to come out and speak for himself. So Cross comes out. And, uh, you know, he basically says that, uh, you know, he aligned himself with Austin Aries because Austin Aries is the only other guy here in the company that is about making change and that his destruction is brings about change. So Killer Cross basically ends up saying that, uh, you know, no one is above the toll or no matter when the time is cold or old, everyone pays the toll. Um, so that's this new thing. Everyone pays the toll. Uh, Aries says, if you cross the champ, you get crossed out, which I really like that line. Uh, he says he's unbeatable and unstoppable. Calls out Edwards by saying his wife should have actually already left him for him himself, Austin Aries. Uh, and anyone else, he also then challenges Eddie Edwards, anyone else to step up and get crossed out. Now, Austin Aries, music hits, him and Killer Cross are starting to walk up the entrance ramp. Eddie Edwards then comes out and he's holding a kendo stick, you know, he's swinging it wildly. Austin Aries then starts to cut a promo on him as he's uh, doing his, you know, get up where he's laying in the top turnbuckle. Uh, Killer Cross appears like now he's going to take the uh, beat down or the attacks from Eddie Edwards as Eddie Edwards starts to hit him with the kendo stick. Austin Aries on the mic challenging and yelling at him, uh, saying, oh, you know, that got you fired up about the comment about your wife. Um, after he knocked down Killer Cross with uh, his... DDT and after a couple of kendo shots to some different parts of the body um, He looks like he's just about to go after Austin Aries and just as he's about to Killer Cross grabs him by the legs as he's laying there on the ground Austin Aries hits him with the title um, This allows Killer Cross to get up to his feet regain control um, and uh, hit him with a uh, His cross jacket choke or as he likes to call it the hurt business and uh, That's how the segment ends with Austin Aries and Killer Cross standing tall. Pretty cool segment. Pretty awesome to hear Killer Cross. And he also didn't have to say too much. But what he did say, I think was pretty clear. Uh, Killer Cross is here to uh, F things up. And everyone's going to pay the price. And if you stand in his way of making changes in this industry, you're going to get crossed out. Uh, we then go back to the ring for our third match of the night. Now, but before we had our, we started our third match, there was a quick like commercial break, like the still to come to segment, um, or during the break. And uh, Eddie Edwards is in the back, and Alicia Edwards comes up, and she's all. Uh, it makes it seem like she's trying to console on him or check on him. And uh, Eddie Edwards is still upset. Basically, she ends up saying that she hasn't come home because he's still crazy. And it, this actually, you know, um, enrages him further as he's like, "I'm not crazy." And then she leaves, and I just thought that was a little. Peculiar. I mean, that's your your wife. That's your husband. You're not gonna, you know, stay there and try to support him. Maybe calm down. Get him a glass of water. I don't know. Be a good uh, emotional support there for your significant other, rather than just saying he's crazy and walk off like I gotta go wrestle. All right. So uh, we then, like I said, go to the next match. Now, before the match starts between Eli Drake and Joe Henry, I gotta admit this is actually one of the first times I've sat or seen through Henry's musical talent. Um, maybe I wasn't paying attention. Uh, but it's a one music, one minute music video that airs, and uh, he, it's just Joe Henry singing, and he's wearing different like cutouts of uh, Eli Drake and the Cult of Lee members, and he's singing itself, you know, if I could be in the Cult of Lee. Uh, it ends with him like holding him, you know, a DIY Funko that he's got made of himself. Um, I thought this was actually really funny, pretty good, and I thought he actually sounded pretty decent. I thought he actually sounded better than. Uh, who's the uh, Elias, right? And I thought he actually sounded better than Aiden English. 
as far as singing is concerned on wrestling. But then again, Aiden English does sing a different style. It's more opera classical. This was more pop EDM, ha 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 parody. Um, so the match again is going to be Eli Drake versus Joe Hendry. Uh, match starts out with good back and forth action between Drake and Hendry. Uh, no one actually really had an advantage as they were just kind of countering each other back and forth. Um, about two or three minutes into the match, though, Drake does eventually take control. Uh, he unloads on some with him with a vicious shoulder tackle, um, some high strikes to the knee, uh, and knees to his face, some punches, some strikes to the abdomen, I'm sorry. Uh, Hendry then fights back eventually with a couple clotheslines, a neck breaker, and then he hits a DDT for a pinfall attempt. Uh, Conley then tries to interfere, but Grotto ends up making the save or taking him out. Now, uh, this match, though, ended up concluding where there was... a uh, some more interference attempts this time by trevor lee as he was standing on the apron trying to distract uh uh what's joe hendry <laughs> and uh hendry is then trying to point it out to the ref then grotto steps up on the apron and he's trying to yell at the ref to you know get control of lee uh eli drake ends up pushing joe hendry up against the apron where grotto is standing and grotto you know lands outside falling down Eli Drake then rolls up Joe Hendry for the victory. One, two, three. Your winner, Eli Drake. Dummy, yeah. So uh, I guess the interference worked itself. Now, after the match, Katrina was scolding him, which I thought was, again, a little weird. I mean, I guess I guess it plays into the fact that she's Gaga for Hendry, even though Grotto's her boyfriend. Because she was, like, really yelling at him, like, I can't believe you would do that. You had one job. And it was like, who really cares? I think if that's not your boyfriend, I'd be like, oh, that sucks. <laughs> right? I don't know. Maybe I'm getting into too much relationship talk here tonight on Impact Wrestling. Um, so basically, though, Hendry ends up being the, uh, I guess, the hero or the uh, nice guy that he is. He lets bygones be bygones. He doesn't take anything out on Grotto, and they all three leave the arena. So he took the higher road versus Grotto's own girlfriend yelling at him. Uh, we then go to a video package with Matt Seidel. As he's meditating outside with a city landscape. They cut two different packages of, uh, you know, cities and trees and nature and everything growing. Uh, it's Matt Seidel reminiscing and meditating about his loss last week to Pentagon Jr. Doesn't say a single word, just shows the emotion and anxiety that it came with after he lost the match. And then afterwards, he flips into opening his third eye, and that's how the video package ends. It's pretty good. I liked it. It definitely got over the fact that uh, Matt Seidel was saying he's moving on or the loss doesn't bother him he has to grow from it he has to open his third eye uh, we then go back to ove they're on the crazy cam they're upset they're blaming pentagon jr um for you know all the events that have taken place you know them getting their head shaved of course with uh, dave getting his head shaved um it then ends up concluding that sammy callahan says he's had enough He's challenging Pentagon Jr. next week on Impact Wrestling. First time live on television and all competitors or outside interference. Phoenix and OVE will be barred from ringside. It will be a Mexican death match. That'll be interesting to see. Uh, Sammy Callahan promises that one man will only walk out. There was also a promo that aired in the midst of all this that says that uh, in Knoxville, Tennessee, this Sunday, live on Twitch, four hours before SummerSlam. Now, they didn't say four hours before SummerSlam. It's just live 3 p.m eastern or i guess that would be yeah five hours before SummerSlam. i said 4 p.m eastern 3 p.m eastern didn't really understand that um that it's going to be impact wrestling versus uh ngw and it's called uncivil war that'll be live on twitch so if you want to check that out you don't want to watch SummerSlam this sunday but you want to watch some impact wrestling it does look like joey ryan will be involved so that'll be interesting to see uh, we then go to our fourth and final live match of the night because the last match itself is actually going to be, it's not really a sanctioned match, it's going to be that street fight. It's Su Young versus Allie. Now, the match starts out with Su Young creating chaos for Allie. You know, she's on the attack, um, she ends up, you know, landing a plancha and then some uh, mounting her with some strikes to her forearms, to her upper body. Um, now, Allie rolls it to the outside of the ring. Now, all the undead bridesmaids are all standing in line. Um, and kind of freaks out Alex psychologically. Well, they didn't actually interfere in the match, just kind of spooked her a little bit. Uh, now, they did try to interfere later. We'll get to that. Sue Young was, of course, maintaining control throughout this match, slamming Allie's face down to the canvas. She applied a multitude of different chokeholds. Uh, Allie did try to fight back, but Sue Young um, was able to uh, take control again. Allie later on in the match hit a neckbreaker and a senton bomb, went for a pinfall attempt, but Allie 
uh, was unsuccessful in the pinfall attempt as Su Young kicked out. Uh, Ali landed a toe kick to the back of Su Young, uh, then knocked off two of the bridesmaids who attempted to interfere as they stood up on the apron. Uh, two more then attempted on the other side, but Kira Hogan took them out. Now, as Ali is setting up her finisher, um, the match actually never really gets a clear winner. Now, the winner of this match is Allie by disqualification, and it's because Tessa Blanchard comes out and she interferes. Um, so she comes out, and she, Tessa Blanchard knocks out Allie. Now, this actually enrages Su Young because now Su Young's lost the match, and pretty much Su Young was dominating for the good portion of that match. So Su Young, uh, she applies the mandible claw onto Tessa Blanchard, then Allie takes out Su Young with the code breaker. And at this point, everybody's laid out except for Allie. That's how the match and segment ends um so that was it we had a one final commercial break where they hype again the two week special or that's coming up in two weeks impact redefined then we go to the final match non-match it's a pre-taped brawl so of course it's shot outside between in the streets between lax and the ogs now it starts with the ogs and their crew in the street yelling for all lax LX shows up and uh, Conan and King stand face to face. Uh, now they say that the only rule is the bosses will stand back and the crews will rumble. Kind of sounds like capitalism there. So uh, OG lays the titles on the ground and the brawl begins. Now they don't really explain that when they said that the teams will stand back or the bosses will stand back. That's only going to be really the LAX versus the OGs. Because early on, one of the members of King's crew jumps in, and that's when Conan has to send in another guy from his crew, one of their indie workers or street fighters. And he says, hey, you know, that's not the rules we agree to. But nevertheless, those two weren't, or anyone else, weren't used beyond that. Um, the OGs had the advantage early on as they caused havoc outside, a barrage of weapons used from tires to traffic cones to common food utensils like a spork. Uh, the OGs were beating the crap out of LAX pretty fiercely here. Uh, Super Max was taking out dudes left and right. I mean, big dude looked heavy, looked strong. Like in a real street fight, you'd be scared of that guy. Um, eventually, though, the uh, LAX 5150 took control and they started, uh, you know, beating down Santana. I'm sorry, yeah, started beating down Homicide and Super Max. Uh, King then threw in a sock full of, I guess, quarters, dimes, nickels, something, you know, rocks. I don't know into the match but santana got it and he ends up using it for himself uh super mechs then fought back he ends up becoming a rage he chokes out ortiz with a uh, rope that was thrown in by the crew he then picks up and power bombs him and throws him into lax 5150's crew itself knocking them all out so basically he assaults everyone um so now at, however you know basically it ends up being that Santana still has the sock full of quarters. He takes out Supermax and he starts like wailing on him, like full mounting on him with this just ground and pound. Uh, he then assault, like I say, assaults that down to Max. It basically ends with everybody out now at this point, except for uh, LAX 5150 holding up their title saying, yeah, we did it, we did it. Conan comes into the scene. Yeah, we did it, we did it. King comes into the scene. He's now yelling at Conan saying, this isn't over that, you know, you don't have the huevos to take me out. Um, he's, he's sitting there trying to egg him on, gets in his face, cursing, yelling at him. Eventually, um, Conan is, I don't, I wouldn't say enraged to the point where he's egged on, but it probably could have just been his plan all along, like a mob bat, a mob boss would do. As eventually King gets on his hands and knees and puts his hands behind his back. No one's holding him down. It says, go ahead, do it, do it. And Santana hands him over the sock full of color, uh, quarters. And he says, with pleasure, Mother Effer, and hits him over the head, and Impact fades to black, and that's how Impact ends. Very, very good ending, Impact Wrestling. I would actually say a very good episode of Impact Wrestling itself. It moved quite along quickly. Um, I still have to complain about the GWN match of the week. However, I was at least happy to put it in the front half of the show, so that way it didn't ruin any of the momentum that later ensued. You know what I mean? Like, they gave you the huge Havoc match with Phoenix and Sammy Callahan to build you up. Let you cool down with this GWN match of the week and then slowly cascaded again and peaked with this uh, LAX brawl. So bravo to LAX and OGs for this uh, magnificent shooting. And of course, Conan and King. Of course, bravo to Impact for another well-produced episode of Impact Wrestling. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for me today. Matthew Schaffer here, August 16th, 2018. Of course, you could be watching this on August 17th, 2018 or any other time in the future on the Impact wrestling report my name is matthew Schaffer. you can follow me along on twitter at matthew 
underscore Schaffer on Instagram at Matthew underscore Schaffer. Look out for the That Wrestling Club box unboxing and giveaway. I'm going to be giving a signed autograph of Elias, WWE Superstar. As well as follow me on Hummy Media Group on Twitter as I help moderate that there with a couple other members. And we will be giving away a Funko Pop there as well, as well as other goodies and things that you can find if you join the Hummy Media Discussion Group on Facebook and listen to HackerHummy.Podbean.com with Big Ray Hernandez, Michael Drago from This Is NXT, and Rick Vickery from This Week in WWE debuting next week. I'm Matthew Schaffer. Don't you dare go too far. We'll see you next week on the IWR.